none other than Pastor Luis. Please come and welcome him. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Big God bless you for the wonderful work that you're doing. You know, one thing about Sister Big God, all right, she's a very humble girl. Do you, do you, do you agree with me? Yes. She's, she's a very humble girl, all right. Humble and humility is so important in life, all right. God love a humble person. God loves humility. And it's a, like a key for any time she speak, uh, she speaks so humble and with great uh, humility. All right, let us bow down and I have a word of prayer. We're going to jump to the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Gracious Father in heaven, we want to thank you this morning, oh Father. We come to you none, none other name but the name of Jesus. Uh, today, Lord, because of the name of Jesus, uh, we have eternal life. Because of Jesus, uh, we have life and more abundant life. Because of Jesus, uh, we have given, oh God, uh, all blessing after one after another, that we will be blessed, oh Father. God, we thank you as we come, O oh Father. We come with expectation, O oh God, uh, this morning that, Lord, uh, the word of God as it goes forth, uh, Lord, will feed our spiritual man. We will be well nutrition, O oh God, by the word of God. Uh, and we thank you, O oh Father, this morning for your Holy Spirit is here and he is the teacher, he is the guide. Uh, is a one who God going to lead uh, this Lord time. Uh, I want to surrender to his hand uh, that the spirit of the Lord uh, is here. And wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I thank you, Lord, uh, for your power and authority of your word. Your word will go forth uh, and never will return to you a void, but rather you will accomplish the things uh, that you intend to do in the life of the believers, uh, in the life of the church, oh God, uh, that we want more of Jesus in our life. And we want Lord, to be more like Jesus, oh Father. We just surrender, Lord, our service and commit each and every one uh, that here, Lord, the next, oh God, 30 minutes, 35 minutes, we will give, Lord, uh, full 100% concentration on the word of God. Uh, and I thank you and ask for your blessing and anointing. In Jesus' name, I ask and pray. And the people of God say, Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, today I'm going to bring you the last sermon for 2023. Okay. Do you realize that? Already. Next Sunday, that the year end. Okay. So I want, I was uh, asking the Lord, uh, you know, during especially Christmas season, you know, what, what shall I preach? You know, I was seeking and asking the Lord, asking the Holy Spirit and walking. And finally, this word came, all right. The seven I am. The seven I am. Can I have my sermon in my uh, on the screen? Our PA assistant, can you put up the sermon? So as I was praying, all right, as I was praying and asked the Lord, what do I need to preach? And the Holy Spirit, he, he don't begin to give me the word. He said, the seven I am. And I began to go through it and uh, began to read it and began to fall in love the seven powerful, you know, uh, the greatest thing that Jesus did, the Gospel of John, by revealing himself uh, the seven or statement or seven declaration or seven, you know, uh, revealing himself who is Jesus to us. As we celebrate the season of Christmas, all right, we just we don't want to go to the emotion and you know, but we want to know who is our Lord. We want to go deeper into Him and understand the biblical truth that why Jesus came, that why Jesus died, and why Jesus revealed Himself, and why Jesus is coming back again. Amen. So we want to today. We want to go through the seven I am. And before that, if you turn your Bible, I want to read the Gospel of John, chapter 1 to chapter 14. He will give you 
um, a buffer that what we do, do, you know, we need to do, and you have a much understanding that who is Jesus. Amen. But I tell you, uh, Bible, the Gospel of John, chapter one to chapter uh, uh, fourteen. All right. He says, verse one: In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All right, take note, all right? He was with God in the beginning. Who is that? Jesus. Verse 3, through him all were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. Verse 4, in him was life. In him was life. And that light was the light of men. And the light shined in the darkness, and the darkness has not understood it. Verse 6, he says, There came a man who was sent from God. His name is John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not alive, he came only as a witness to the light. Verse 9. And the true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. Verse 10 he said, He was in the world, and through the world was made through him. The world did not recognize him. Oh, what the what, what, what sad news, right? Verse uh, Eleven, he said, he came to which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Verse John, he said, yet to all who receive him, those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. That is you and me. Verse that he said, children born not of the natural descent. No, no of human decision or the husband will born but born of God. Amen. Verse 14 says that the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and the only who come from the Father full of grace and truth. Amen. Hallelujah. So, as I begin, as I want to bring the introduction to my sermon this morning, all right. Okay, the se the seven I am, all right. The seven I am, uh, Jesus revealed Himself. Okay, you can say He made a statement, He did the declaration. But to me, I feel in the spirit, Jesus revealed the Son of God came to reveal Himself. Who is He? Because when He was here on earth, many uh, Pharisees and uh, you know, all the lawmakers and uh, what not, uh, they say, who are you? Who are you? Alright? And we ask, who are you? Can you reveal yourself? And finally, Jesus began to reveal himself in the Gospel of John. Why of all the Gospels, alright? Gospel of Matthew, he did not do it. Gospel of Mark, he did not do it. Gospel of Luke, he did not do it, but the Gospel of John, he did it. The seven I am. Why? Why he did it? Alright, the Gospel of John. You know, the Bible, of course, we have the four Gospels, but the three Gospels, it be called the Synoptic Gospel. The synoptic gospel means they share information. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, they share information, the birth of the Lord, okay, the, the ministry of Jesus Christ, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, and also the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
They share the information. But in the Gospel of John, if you read the first chapter I just read, all right, for the benefit of you to understand, John, the Gospel, John introduced, all right, the Gospel of John, he said not about the birth of the Christ, he said in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Amen. He brought the Savior into such a, you know, a powerful revelation to the audience that was waiting to know who was he. And he went further and said, he is the light. He is the light. And we as the child of God this morning, as you sit down here, we are called the children of light, no more the children of darkness. And when John began to go further in chapter 1 and chapter 2, I noticed why he had a special, uh, a special encounter with God. This happened when Jesus took his three disciples to Mount Haven. And he said, we need to get to the mountain to pray. And he took number one, Peter. All right, these are three closest alive. Peter, John, and Jesus. So when they reached the pinnacle of the mountain, and then Jesus was praying, and the disciples were too tired. They were like sleeping and praying. You know, most of the time when our disciples with our Lord Jesus Christ, whenever the Lord say, pray with me, they all need to sleep. Amen. Regarding Gethsemane, Jesus says, all right, pray with me, all right, and he tell with me one hour, all of them sleep. Okay. But then the Holy Spirit came, the disciples were full of the Holy Spirit of God. They were no sleeping, all right, sleep all God, because why? The Holy Spirit had taken over the sleep and took it over their life, and they were so fiery for the Lord. So come back to the Gospel of John. John revealed Jesus in a very powerful way. Such a way because in, 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 in that mountain, when Jesus was praying, the Bible says suddenly, all right, Jesus clothed began to turn white and his face began to shine and suddenly on the right he saw Moses on the left he saw Elijah all right the greatest miracle man uh, Moses is the Lord giver and Jesus was the center they were communicating and John saw this great the manifestation of Jesus, he was not just a son of God, he is God. He got a revelation of Jesus Christ in the mountain and he know that he is not just a, a savior, he is not a messiah, he is God. God came in flesh and dwelt among us, hallelujah. Of course, many people doesn't, you know, agree that that day that God can come and live. Of course, we are the Christmas time, or the virgin birth, or Jesus born through a virgin birth. Because God is in spirit, He needs a body. That's why in the book of uh, the book of Exodus, all right. If you can go to the book of Exodus. Uh, Chapter 3, verse 14. Here, God began to speak to Moses, all right? God says to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. That's all uh, the, the God has said to Moses, tell the people, tell the Israelites, I am, I am. Moses was Pitch black. He said, God, how am I to tell the people I am, I am? But here in the Gospel of, uh, you know, in the New Testament, Jesus began to reveal the seven I am, and are you ready to receive it today? I'm so sorry. 
Shout the Amen. Amen. Speak the name loud. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Because the Bible teaches, all right, when we say amen, you know what? The, actually, the meaning is it be unto me, Lord. Hallelujah. When the angel Gabriel came and told Mary, you're going to conceive her uh, and you're going to bear a son to the Holy Spirit. And without hesitation, she said, Lord, did she say, Amen? Uh, and said, Be unto me, Lord. Hallelujah. So this morning, as I revealed the seven, I am, and you say, Lord, uh, you say, Amen, luckily, and say, You are telling, actually, Be unto me, Lord. God want to bless you abundantly. What you will say? Amen. Amen. God made it already for God to see. It's okay. Alright, you're already blessed. You have Jesus in your life, you're blessed. So we will, we will begin to see that God the Father just say, I am, I am. But but when when he became encountered Jesus, when he came uh, in flesh, it was a different, uh, you know, it was a different manifestation, okay? So from the historical, uh, historical scripture of the Bible, Jesus clearly emphasized that he is the solo way to heaven. He's the only way to heaven. Not merely a way, but the one and the only path to lead to people. Today, you know, a lot of religion teach, you know, this is the way, that is the way, you know, that is the way. But no religion leader dare to say, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Amen. That's why somebody, you know, uh, say, all right, when we go to heaven, all right, I mean, no offense, all right, you know, Christian will not be waiting for you there. Buddha will not be waiting for you there. Muhammad might not be waiting for you there. But only one person will be waiting at the door of heaven. Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen? Amen. 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 So you're telling, be unto me, Lord, when I go to heaven, I will not cross the wrong gate and hell, you know, let the wrong place, but I will land where my Savior is waiting for me to receive me when we all one day go to heaven. All right, some go early, some go late, but it doesn't matter, we all will reach into that place. So all the seven I am, affirmation statement quoted by Jesus, he last Nazareth a remarkably metaphor to which teaches about his relationship towards the world. His divine nature and his unity with God. You know, any, many times Jesus says, whatever the Father do, I do. Whatever the Father say, I see. Whatever the Father say, I hear. You know, he had that connection, that unity with the Father. Do you have that, that, that connection with, 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 the, with the God? Do you have the connection with Jesus? Do you have the connection with the Holy Spirit? Can you hear what the Holy Spirit is saying this morning to you? Can you feel it? Can you, you know, understand that what the Holy Spirit is beginning to speak to you this morning? Because the Bible says, all right, we should be able to hear the voice of God inside here because the Holy Spirit has been deposited uh, into our lives that we accept Jesus Christ as a Lord and Savior. Jordan, are you here this morning? Amen. Welcome, brother. God bless you. I'll accept the of this. All right? So his divine nature and make it crystal clear that he is the one and the same as God. His divine nature, you know, the humble Messiah came, uh, you know, to rather than, you know, to be served by, to, to be served, but uh, he served. He came a servant. That's the reason when people look at Jesus, he said, he's too weak. Aha, they underestimated. Alright. That's what the Bible says, when you're weak, you are. Amen. When you're poor, you're rich. 
because what the Lord has done in our life. Amen. Amen. I'm not talking about your bank account, I'm talking about your spiritual bank account. <laughs> Right. So rely on the uh, and, and compass seven I am affirmation of this deity is speaking I am. Alright, so let's go to our first I am. Okay, yeah, first I am. Alright, first I am, we will read John chapter 6, uh, verse 25. He said, and Jesus declared that I am the bread of life. How many of you like to eat bread? Say Lotti Lot. Lotti Kaya Lot. Alright. We love bread. Especially hot bread. I like the smell of bread because it's, you know, it's really nice, especially for breakfast and tea time. So Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. Wow, oh, that is good news, man. Anyone who come to me will never go hungry, and whoever believe in me will never be thirsty. <coughs> well, Jesus is so unique, you know, because when you pray and you eat a bit too far, you will choke, you need your water to drink, other you get choke. The Lord gave us bread and water. But God is not talking about that the physical bread, alright, but rather Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of Hallelujah. <coughs> Amen. Do you eat to live or live to eat? Eat to live. Hallelujah. I believe my God's son spoke out. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. So Jesus, as much as he's concerned about your physical well-being, he is much more concerned on your spiritual well-being. Whether each Sunday you have received his mana, each Sunday you have received the word of God. Uh, because Jesus said, all right, he was not joking when he said, man shall not live by uh, bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Uh, because the Bible says, uh, God has deposited his word. Uh, we came to exceed, uh, we came to be through the word of God. Uh, that everything that, you know, I am, I and God says, all right, all that is done through the spoken the word of God. So, as a child of God, how much more do we need the word of God in our life? The Bible says, all right, because of the lack of the knowledge of the word of God, the people of God are destroyed. You need more of the word of God this morning. You know, this morning, uh, we, I, my wife was having breakfast, and uh, she told me yesterday, he said, dear, there's only two slices of uh, uh, bread left for uh, lamb. I think you go ahead and eat since you're preaching, you need to eat more, okay? And, uh, and to my surprise, when I opened the fridge, okay, I found another, another two bread, uh, two slices of bread uh, in, in another top one. And my wife came down and I said, yeah, there's enough bread for us to eat. She said, really? She said, yeah. So I said, enjoy your breakfast, all right? I said, do you know, do you know what Bethlehem means? I asked her a question. Do you know, I know Jesus was born in Bethlehem, right? Okay, what? What Bethlehem means? City of bread. Ah. Alright. So I, my wife was suddenly mistaken. <laughs> she couldn't get me the answer for, you know, Bethlehem is the house of bread. Amen. So I told her, don't worry. We as a child of God, Bethlehem is always, will never 
run out of breath. God is our bread. All right, Jesus began to declare, I am the bread of life. So does the bread of life is not uh, not earthly, but heavenly bread that will satisfy our spiritual hunger and our thirst to make righteous in the sight of God. I am the bread of life. Because the reason that we want to go after Jesus. And during when Jesus was on the earth walking and preaching and uh, 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 performing miracles, people, thousands and thousands and thousands of people were following Jesus. Because why? They're not, not so hungry on the physical part. They were hungry on the spiritual part. And of course, Jesus uh, feed the 5,000 with five loaves and two fishes, they add after when Jesus preached the, the sermon. And they began to believe Jesus, I am the bread of life. Why did Jesus reveal it? almost in the part of the four gospel? Because he wanted to perform all the miracles first and let the people see. Then he wanted to reveal, I am the bread. Because if you don't, because Jesus was physically on this earth, he did perform the miracle. He told the disciples, all right, the 5,000 people over here, we need some food. It's getting late. The disciples said, no way, no. But the Lord said, go and look. They make an effort to go and look. They got five bread and two fishes. And what Jesus took, he took and said, Father, thank you. And then he began to multiply and he feed 5,000 people. And chop basket of bread and fish for the job doubting disciple. So the, the fun facts, the, the fun fact on the word meaning in Christian Bible, the city of Bethlehem, the place birth of Jesus Christ means house of bread. Amen? Do you remember? Can you remember the scripture? I hope you are. Secondly, Jesus began to declare, alright, I am the light of the world. Gospel of John chapter 8, verse 12. He said, Jesus, again Jesus spoke to them and said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follow me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Wow. We are the people of light. That's why many times I say, you are the light of the world. Demons will have to bow down to you because we have the light of God. You can walk into any dark places, you can walk to any place, you, unless you doubt, then fear come into your life. That's why each time you need to confess, alright? Second Timothy, alright? What's happening? But you confess that God has not given you a spirit of fear, but power, love, and sound mind. I have a sound mind this morning. I will not fear. God will supply my bread every day. That's why when we get up in the morning, we want to spend some time and we want to eat the spiritual bread that God bring down from heaven. So Jesus the light will lead us out of darkness in all of it and form whether it is the darkness of ignorance or impurity or even sorrow. Whatever darkness that you go through in life, it doesn't matter, the Bible says. But God is the light. He will set you free again and again and again. If you say amen. I know some of us might go through the most darkest time. Today. Maybe this month. Maybe this year. But this morning. Be well. Be aware. That the light in you. Will 
break the chain free and set you free from whatever the bondage the enemy ever put against you, that you will come out victoriously in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, let's go to the third one. Third one, Jesus began to reveal himself, I am the door. Alright, can, can we have uh, John 10, 9 to 10? I am the door, if anyone enter by me, he will be saved. Alright, not pintu belakangan, not back door, alright. Whoever enter the front door, alright, I am the door, if anyone enter by me, he will be saved. And he will go in, in and out, and find what? Passion. I am the door. It's time that we go and do evangelism, alright? Begin to preach, alright? Many unbelievers, we begin to preach. You see, the door is open for you. You have one chance to accept Jesus Christ as a Lord and Savior. If you enter this door, you will never regret. Alright? This door is the door. That Jesus has opened for you. Do you want to receive Jesus as the Lord and Savior? Because the door of heaven is open to you. So the Bible says in John 10, 9 to 10, the thief does not come except but to steal, to kill, to destroy. I have come that you may have life, that you may have it more what? Abundantly. Many children and many Christians I find they I cannot see abundant life in your life. God say I give you abundant life. What is abundant life? Peace, joy, love in the Holy Spirit. Sometimes I see them so sad. Sometimes I see them they're so worried. Sometimes I see them they the way they will be found. But Jesus has given us abundant life. The enemy doesn't want you to hear the word of God this morning. Because why? If you know more the word of God, Satan cannot manipulate your mind. More of Jesus, less of the world. Amen? So, today, the door is open. And I hope that you and I have entered that door. And if Jesus knock at our door to come into our spiritual life, which, which direction or do you envision the door will open? Which direction? Jesus says, oh, maybe I can go on. Now that I am better than speak than that. Okay? So in the third declaration of Jesus, he has said that there is no other gateway to heaven but through Him. He is the only door which we can enter and to be saved. That's why, you know, somebody comes to accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. Wow, the Bible says heaven rejoice, man. Do you rejoice? You be joy, you put up your hand and say, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. What so heaven rejoice? That is so odd for men to enter the kingdom of God. That's why what so heaven rejoice. Jesus says it's easy for uh, 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 easy for a candle to enter the needle of the eye than a rich man to enter the, into the kingdom of God. Have you seen the horse or not? Have you seen a needle before? Don't say I remember my mother, you know, all this on the so she cannot see. She asked us, alright, because we are so young, we can see the needle of the and put the train inside. It's so, you know, it's so beautiful. The horse are so small. But yet, Jesus opened the door, his door until now is still open. It's still open. 
So the fourth I am, I love this, all right? The fourth I am, Jesus revealed, I am the good shepherd. Everyone that needs a shepherd in their life. You see, when Jesus came and saw the multitude in the New Testament, he saw all, all the sheep without a shepherd. Jesus had compassion for all the sheep, the wondering about knowing, don't know what to do in life, all right? But they have never known the gospel. And Jesus finally declared that I am the good shepherd. John 10, 11, he said, I'm the good shepherd, and the good shepherd give his life for the sheep. Hallelujah. Because Jesus is our good shepherd, he paid the price at Calvary on Good Friday and he gave his life for the shepherd. He gave the life for you and me because he's a good shepherd. And Jesus warned the last day there will be Lord the shepherd will be coming very wolf clothing. He said, be careful, don't let them devour you. So Jesus is the good shepherd. Jesus will never disappoint you. Jesus will never discourage you. Jesus will not say any word that will hurt you. He will only hear you. And you want to know what he has spoken? Go and read the Bible. He has said a lot of things about us. How much that he loves you. How much that he wants you. How much that he wants to spend time with you. Because what? He is the good shepherd. So in using the phrase, the good shepherd, Jesus referring his inheritance of goodness, especially towards his sheep, which refer to the followers. Christ continued, to, uh, Christ continued <coughs> by reassuring us the good shepherd would lay down his life for the sheep, which he did on Go, go away, good people. No. That's the reason in John 3.16 he said, For God so loved the world, he gave his only son to die. Whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus died for the good and the bad. Amen. So unlike like other hired, all right, hired hand shepherd. You know, a shepherd will have hired hand shepherd. But this hired hand shepherd, that when they see a wolf attacking the sheep, they will run away, abandon the sheep. Okay. That's what the Bible says. And the Bible says. This is what Jesus says. And he would uh, abandon the sheep at the first sight of the wolf. John 10. So who can we put our hope and our trust in the Lord that until the end of my life that you will be my shepherd, the holy person is Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Holy Spirit. That's why, you know, King David, he said the Lord is my shepherd. Amen. He knows he never met Jesus before, but he had a revelation of the Holy Spirit of God. He said, The Lord is my shepherd. Even father as father and mother we deny our children, but the Lord will never deny us. Because we see anything that is favoring us, we will beat up the children. Of. Not favoring us, not benefiting, we don't need that. But our Heavenly Father says, You. So you will, or are you give good things to your children? How much more your heavenly Father will give it to you when you ask what you want for Christmas? <laughs> I know what you want for your Christmas. You're too frantic. Come on, guys, laugh. 
Glory to God. Okay, the fifth one. I promise to stop at job 20. See when I can make it another by the grace of God. So, fifth one. I am the resurrection and life. Amen. 11, 25, 26. So that Jesus says to her, I am the resurrection and life. And whoever believes in me, through he died, yet he will live. Anyone who lives uh, and believes in me will never die. You know, this incident, and Jesus really manifest, uh, really manifest the miracle by raising Lazarus. Lazarus was dead for four days. A person who dead for four days is really, really, really dead. <laughs> because he just died, you know, somebody can raise you up. But he died for four days. And the Lord went him to four days to just sleep. And he came. And he resurrected Lazarus and gave back to his sisters. And the people began to witness, who oh, is this man? Even a person who has died for four days can bring him to life. He must be our Emmanuel. God is with us. Amen. There are so many religions. None of them have raised person who died, all right? One day, two day, three day, and never here. But Jesus resurrected Lazarus after four days because he said, I am the resurrection and life. He who believes in me, even he die, he shall live. This is the blessed assurance that we have. This is the purpose that we come every time to church. Uh, I want to receive more. I want to receive more and prepare us uh, all right, for the day when Jesus comes or doesn't come. We know that we have the assurance that we, to absent from here, is to be present with the Lord. Each time we the Lord, this is one of the scriptures I used to, to encourage the family. See, don't worry, your husband is in heaven. Don't worry, he's happy there. Don't call him back. But when you go, you will see them. Amen? So last week. I am the way, I am the truth, and the life. Okay, John 14, 6 to 7, it says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one come to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him who has seen me. So Jesus begin to reveal, I am the way, the truth, period. And he has fulfilled this in his life. Everything that Jesus lived, the way is always right. Wherever the, whatever Jesus said is the truth. And Jesus came to give us not just life, but eternal life. So it is explained in, in, in this first affirmation that Jesus used a definite article to teach himself the only way which we use again the truth and the light pointing to previous stories. That is the way, the truth, and the life. Glory to God. Can we stand, church? I finish my preaching. Glory to God. <coughs> amen. How many of you have received the word of God this morning? Can you say amen? Amen. 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 Jesus is the bread of life. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah.
you, O Father. Let the anointing fall on them. Let the fire of the Holy Spirit of God, Lord, come upon them right now. In Jesus' name. Oh, Father, we thank you for the victory. Oh, thank you for the breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many of you put your hand up and you see the light of God uh, coming upon you. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive it in Jesus' name. God says, uh, enough, say enough. I will do much on 2024 with a victorious Savior. I have a victorious Savior, so I will be victorious in Jesus' name. Uh, Every setback that will be come back in Jesus' name. Uh, Father, I pray, Lord, you bring restoration to your people. Bring healing to your people. Bring healing of the mind, the soul, and the spirit, oh Father. That they will, oh God, uh, walk out this place, oh Father, full of the love, the joy, and the in the Holy Spirit in your life, O oh God. I pray, O oh God, rest on your joy, O oh Father. Rest on your peace, O oh God. Uh, whatever be taken away from them, uh, Father God, your restoration is always greater than the loss, O oh God. If they lost one sheep, O oh God, you will restore on four sheep back to them in Jesus' name. Receive, hallelujah. Receive the word of God. Amen, amen. Thank you, Father, for hearing our prayer. Lord, even there is no way, but God, you will make a way because you are the, the way, the truth, and the life this morning. And we thank you, O oh Father God, for hearing our prayer. Thank you for your healing, O oh God. Let the miracle of God unfold upon this place, O oh God. I thank you, O oh Father. I pray, Lord, you will be with your people, O oh God, wherever they go. Lord, Lord, you watch over them, you keep them, you protect them, and make the fish shine, oh Father, that you'll be kind to them, oh Father, and you'll continue, oh God, to love them, and continue to provide for them, bless them, oh Father God, uh, as we celebrate the season of Christmas, uh, we will be the light, oh God, to the world, and sharing, oh God, the gospel, oh God. We just thank you, we praise you. Lord, this morning I bless your people, oh God. Uh, they will lack nothing, oh Father. I pray, oh God, they're going to be supernatural miracle, oh God. Uh, flowing down from heaven into their life, into their family, into their career, into their finance, uh, into all areas of their life, oh God. I will see, oh God, many testimony that will be testified very soon, oh God. Uh, and I think we'll give glory to God in Jesus' name I ask and I pray. Amen. Father, we thank you for the food that you have laid. I just want to thank you, oh God. Uh, Lord, you bless the fellowship. You will bless, oh God, your people, oh God, as we fellowship together. And I want to thank you in Jesus' name.